Hey guys, Tim here. Today with a great little graphics card that confuses the crap out of me. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at the MSI R7 250. Uh, this was kindly provided by AMD for me to take a look at. And I always, you know, you guys, anytime I get stuff, I'm going to let you guys know that I got it. Um, I really did want to take a look at this and why I wanted to take a look at this is because honestly it confuses the crap out of me um, So much so that I'm drinking behind the, the case here It's priced in a very interesting price point so under $100. It doesn't need power It's not as good as the 750 Ti. So let's get to this. It of course comes with some MSI features above and beyond the AMD like mantle and things like that. It has afterburner software, which is gonna help increase the performance. It is overclocked. Um, it has solid aluminum caps, super ferrite chokes, supports DirectX 11.2 and OpenGL uh, 4.3. And uh, the only other thing that, you know, besides kind of the standard stuff that the current R7s have, uh, is it only has one gig of RAM so under a hundred dollar card that's kind of what you're going to expect however it would have been really nice to see uh, two gigs even I think if they backed it off to like GDDR3 maybe um, so I'm not quite sure what I think I'm not to be honest with you guys and you guys can let me know in the comments do you think one gig of GDDR5 is better than two gigs of GDDR3 or 4 I don't know However, let's take a look. So, this is a card, you know, it's under $100. Ooh, it actually has a closed cell phone. We have the card. And I think we have some drivers in here somewhere. Ah, oh, look at that. The disc of you should not use. But granted, if you don't have an internet, you know, I will say, well, I'll sidetrack here real quick while I'm getting rid of the box. If you do have, a lot of us keep saying like, don't use this disc. But you know what? If you don't have internet, guys, use the disc. And then take a USB key to somebody's house that has internet and grab the latest drivers. So if you need them, at least they're here. And if you have internet, for the love of God, go down the newest ones. We have a quick user guide. Ooh, very fancy quick user guide. That's kind of cool. Not a whole lot there, of course, because, well, frankly, it's pretty easy to install a video card. And let's go ahead and get this guy out, and then I'll annoy you all by sitting it on the outside of the bag. So, it's got a good little cooler. Uh, it's got their silent bl uh, blade fan design. Uh, a very large heat sink. It's kind of hard to see, but the heat sink is, you know, this whole area. It is dual slot. And it has HDMI, uh, DVI, and VGA. So, no display port. So, it does support crossfire. Uh, it can do two-way crossfire with no fingers. And... I'm still trying to figure out the dual graphics, guys, because things are ever changing. And this is kind of the level of card that would support dual graphics. Last time I did my research on it, the 240 and the 250 hadn't been enabled uh, on dual graphics with the 7850, the, the Kavari stuff. That may change by the time you watch this video. So you can always keep an eye out at amd.com forward slash dual graphics. That's the first place I go to always look up to see what goes with what. And if it is supported, I will do some tests and let you guys know what I see. From what I've seen so far, if you're playing games, dual graphics isn't really the best idea just because of the micro stuttering. If you're doing things like you know, video, light video stuff, home video, you know, movies, um, 
watching DVD, Blu-ray DVDs, stuff like that, then it makes a lot more sense because you get a little bit extra horsepower. And, you know, why not? It's not costing you anything, to be completely honest. So now, why am I confused by this card? It's priced great. It definitely has... Um, it's not a gaming card, guys. I, I don't really care what anybody says. If you're trying to game AAA titles... Honestly, you're better buying an Xbox or a PS4. Now, granted, they're more than this, but once you consider the whole system, uh, they're not. What I think this thing is set up perfectly for are home theater PCs. It's going to be quiet. It doesn't require uh, supplemental power. But it's not half-height compatible. And... You know, to be honest with you, if I'm going to put a card in a Media Center PC, I may have the room if I have something like the Node 604, the Fractal Design HTPC case behind me, that can accept full height cards, then, you know, you're good. So, would I buy this card? Since AMD was nice enough to send me this card, I didn't spend my own money on it. Would I spend my own money on it? And I think the answer, obviously, is... Well, yes, because I've already spent my money on the previous generation of this card. Now, that being said, I do have a home media center PC case, you know, the Node 604, that can handle full height cards. Um, and that's what I like to use for my home media center PC. And I don't game on my home media center PC. I tend to just watch movies and stuff from it or, you know, like YouTube stuff like that. So in that scenario, I think it's worth it. It would also be worth it if you had, you know, like an older dual core processor, something, you know, four or five years old that maybe only has like a 360 watt power supply in it. It says you want a 400 watt power supply, but guys, I'm, I'm betting you can get away with a 360. So if that older machine, you know, maybe you have a small form factor, uh, HP or Dell that will fit a dual, um, dual width, a full height card, then this is definitely worth it because the 750 Ti is going to draw a little bit more power and it may not, you know, you're in that funny space where the power supply just may not quite be powerful enough to be able to do, you know, upgrade the machine. But, you know, if it's, you know, a machine you do homework on, if you're building something out for your kids, um, you know, your parents, heck, this is going to be, you know, in that price range where it makes sense to, and you know, it's the supplemental power. And in older machines, a lot of those old power supplies don't have supplemental power. So this is, you know, what I consider to be, you know, the best performance you can really get for kind of that price point. Um, you know, a lot. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to say, you know, well, the 750 Ti, bloody, 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 bloody. Sure, but in this price point, it's $50 more, which is another, you know, 50% of the price of this card. So if you're just looking to upgrade an old machine, I think you want to buy, you know, the card that's the best, most cost effective possible. Resurrecting an older PC or you're building out a home theater PC. I think this is the new card you buy because I thought previously that the 6670 was the card you bought. And this is basically the new 6670. So this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time, I guess. Eh?